All right, we're on day four of six four. Um, we on Friday we did our link. Oh. On Friday we did our link. Um, as you recall, let me get to it. Crash course for anyone out Friday. <coughs> this formula right here is what we learned on Friday. Theta equals S over R. S means the arc length, distance traveled. R, of course, is the radius. Um, the stipulation was S and R need to be in the same unit of measurement. And theta needs to be in radians. The relationship comes from having being able to set up a proportion. And we, we walked through being able to set it up just so you can understand where it came from. Then we dove right into practice problems. The practice problems, I think y'all all pretty much agreed they weren't as bad um, as what you probably thought they were going to be, but that's because I made you do six of them. So I feel like if we had just done two, you probably wouldn't have felt as comfortable, but we didn't stop at two. We did six practice problems. Remember, you had to read the question and find out what the key words, um, what information was given to you. And remember, the whole goal behind this was arc length. So that would be the equivalent of how much crust needs to go on a pizza. That's arc length, okay? I'm saying that carefully because today looks almost in the same formatting but it is not arc length. It is linear speed and angular speed. So, keyword here, speed. We're no longer talking about the length of something. Now we're talking about the rate of something moving, right? Totally different. Linear speed, here's what you need to highlight. Linear speed, oh. Linear speed is defined to be the distance traveled, makes sense, speed of a car driving down the interstate, that would be the linear speed, the rate that it is traveling, you know, from point A to point B. Um, the formula for linear speed is V equals S over T. Good news is S is the same thing as it was on Friday. S refers to distance. Well, it's written right there. I just realized. S is distance, so I'm just going to abbreviate this. D I S T, since I don't have enough room. But S is distance. T is self explanatory. T refers to time. So while you do have a new formula right there, um, S is the same concept. It's talking about distance. T is the um, obvious time factor. Then you have angular speed. Angular speed is defined to be the amount of rotation per unit. Totally different. You have linear speed versus angular speed. In the angular speed formula, you'll see this, what looks like a W. This is omega. That is the Greek letter for, it's the lowercase Greek letter for um, omega. I'll put lowercase. The lowercase Greek letter for omega. <clears throat> That little W, that omega, stands for the angular speed, and it's found by taking the theta, which is the rotation in radians, that's the same as Friday, divided by T, which is the time. So, <coughs> V is your linear speed, comes from two two factors that you're already comfortable with. S is distance traveled, T is time. This little W, the omega, is angular speed. It comes from the rotation divided by the time. I'm not, I 
I'm not asking you to memorize it right now. I'm going to look and see if I, I think I give this on the formula sheet, but I'll look to let you know for sure. But look at the two formulas together. Don't, don't look at all of the letters and think about having like four different things. You don't have four different things. They both have what on the bottom? They're both time on the bottom. And on top is what equates to what you're trying to find. If I'm trying to find the distance traveled, it makes sense that on the top refers in the formula is the distance, right? And then if I'm trying to find the speed that it's rotating, it makes sense that at the top is the rotation that it is moving. So the formulas make sense if you look at them in that concept. Now let's let's take some extra notes. Right here, remember though that the theta needs to be in radians, not degrees. <coughs> and now let's draw a silly little visual to help you understand. If we had a person right here trying to get to right here, right? And we said, how fast are they going? The, the rate of which they go from point A to point B describes their linear speed. The distance traveled describes S. Like, what's the distance traveled? Now, the rate that they went that speed is the new part, the linear speed. Angular speed, uh, let's say we have the Earth, right? Let's say we have um, some satellite out here, satellite orbiting the Earth, and we wanted to know what is the rate that that satellite will travel from here to here, and that's rotating, right? It's not moving in a linear fashion, it's rotating. And so you would have to know the degrees of rotation or not degrees, but the radians of rotation, and then you would divide that by the time it took to get there, and that's going to be your angular speed, okay? So the difference is the linear speed takes the distance traveled divided by the time. The angular speed takes the rotation that it travels, like the rotation that it turns, and divides it by the time, okay? And then once you do that, you get the speed. A common example for angular speed, I'm going to put right here, i.e. Um, a bicycle wheel has an angular speed of 150 revolutions per minute. So that's how you talk about angular speed. You're talking about the rotations in relation to time passing. Now, I showed you that to help you understand like what the different parts are, what is it referring to, the difference between the two. The names are telling you that one is referring to the movement across a line, the other one is referring to some type of rotation, right, angular. Use the name to help you know which one you're using. Going to the next slide. Is where they have taken the linear speed and the angular speed and they have found a relationship between the two. So instead of having the two formulas, you have just this one right here. So let's look at it. V equals R times omega. V here is the linear speed. R is the distance from the center of the radius, and omega is the angular speed. Good news is, this is what we will use. We're going to tie the two of them together. Now we may have to go back um, at some point and find one
one of them from the previous ones, but this is where we're going to focus our attention. So V is the linear speed. I know it's written right there, but it's kind of hard to read that. Um, R is the radius. The point uh, distance R from the center of the rotation, and then you have omega, which is the angular speed. Um, one takeaway, you probably already know what's coming. You do have to make sure, and the units of time for both must be the same. Same units of time. They also need to be the same units of measurement. Spell it right. All right, now we have two practice problems from the book, but y'all know me, I didn't think that was enough because this is kind of a nitpicky. So I added two extra practice problems, and then there is a word problem um, that I pulled up that I think might be in the homework, so that's why I pulled it. So we're gonna practice it. This is a little bit more intense than Friday's lesson, but it's the same concept as Friday's lesson um, in terms of just being able to read the question, underline what info they gave you, um, determine what info you're trying to find, use the formula, plug it in, just watch your units. That's, it's all in the same, um, same type of approach. Okay, so example nine. We do have a picture here. Uh, you've got a picture of the Earth with a satellite orbiting. So it says linear speed of an Earth satellite. An Earth satellite in circular orbit 1,200 kilometers high makes one complete revolution every 90 minutes. What's its linear speed? It says what's its linear speed? Use 6,400 kilometers for the length of the radius of the Earth. That's all of the info oh, there, and then I added that picture there. Okay. So I personally, these these types of problems when the numbers are gigantic like this, um, I've noticed that it's, sometimes it intimidates some people. Um, it helps that we have a picture and you can visualize what you're talking about here. Um, let's go through. We, we've read it once. Let's go through and read it again, and let's pull the info that we need. An Earth satellite in circular orbit that is 1,200 kilometers high. I'm just going to underline the 1,200 kilometers because that does play a role. It's 1,200 kilometers high. What do they mean by that? If you look over here, you've got from the center of the Earth to the edge, right? 6400. They're saying from the edge of the earth to the satellite up in the air is 1200 kilometers. Okay, so the distance from the center of the earth to the satellite would be how would I find it? Yeah, you would add those two together. Do you understand that? The 6400 is describing to the edge of the earth. The 1200 is describing from the Earth's surface to the satellite up in the sky. And it is in kilometers. All right. Um, Earth satellite, 1200 kilometers high up in the sky. It makes one complete revolution. So one complete pass around the entire Earth, and it's every 90 minutes. Remember, when you're talking about the rotation, you need to be in radians. Go back to day one from six four. What is in radians one complete rotation? Two pi, right? Always think about one pi is not enough. I want two. Think of it that way. Um, one 
complete rotation is 2 pi. So when they say this right here, one complete revolution, they're secretly telling you that the radians is 2 pi. That one's sneaky. They're saying, hey, it's actually radians is 2 pi. Now, what's the rate that it's going? It's every 90 minutes, right? So what is T? T must be 90. Um, I'm going to just underline that and then draw an arrow and come right here and say, okay, so T is 90 minutes. Then the question says, what is the linear speed? Okay, let's go back to our formula. V equals R angular speed. V is linear speed. So I'm going to come back over here. What is the linear speed? That means find V, right? I'm going to use the space at the top of the paper because this is going to get a little crowded um, to make some notes. So I'm going to write right here that first, what's the Earth's radius in this picture? The length of the Earth's radius? 6400. Okay, so I'm going to make the Earth, Earth's radius equals 6400 kilometers. Right? And then what's the height of the satellite? How high above the Earth's surface is the satellite? 1200 kilometers. Make sure those match. Right? So what is the distance from the center of the Earth to the satellite then? 7,600, right? Y'all see where that number came from? Okay, so let's Think back to your formula. We're gonna, you'll notice I'm strategically writing in different spots. It says, what is the linear speed? Okay, so I'm gonna make a note right here. Linear speed. And by the way, I'm pretty sure if I recall correctly, this, this lesson is the only one for the whole semester that is like this. Okay, in terms of just intensity, lack of care. Like I don't really care about the linear speed and angular speed. A hoop. Just think of it as a hoop. You got to jump through to get through this class, okay? Um, and this is the only one. All right. So linear speed with angular speed in mind is what formula? V equals. We'll just say R W, right? Or R omega. Okay. So I'm going to write that down. V equals R times omega. <coughs> That's what it told me to find. Do I know R? What is it? 7,600 kilometers. I'm, it's important to write your units of measurement, by the way. It's important to write that. Omega. Think back to what I explained on the previous slides. Omega is the angular speed. Meaning, they're telling you the rate at which it's rotating per a, a given time frame. The angular speed, coming back to this to help you understand where it came from, came from, is the rotation in radians divided by the time you're talking about it takes, right? Y'all see that? Don't, don't get bogged down in this. Every single one of you drives at a speed of something miles per hour correct? Right? That's your linear speed. You're going so many miles per so many hours or a fraction of an hour and that's where your linear speed comes from. This is the same concept we're just talking about rotating. 
instead of like driving a car to the beach, you know. Um, so come back to what you already know and do every morning when you get in your car. Okay, so back over here. I don't actually have the, the number for the angular speed, but I have the info to get it. They told me how much it's rotating, and they told me how long it takes to rotate that, right? So I do need to find that, and then I can plug it in here. So that's why there's a gap of space here. This is where I want you to make a note. Arrow, find the a omega, and remember that's angular speed, if you need to label it. Let's find that. So don't overthink it. That is simply the rotation divided by the time. Think of it as miles per hour, but it's rotating. We said it's going to rotate one complete revolution, which is what in radians? 2 pi. We said it's going to take how long? 90 minutes. It really helps to write the units of measurement. You would go to your calculator. Make sure that you, you type 2 pi, like in the top of the fraction. There's the 590. <coughs> Get comfortable with ugly decimals here. You want to talk about some ugly numbers. This whole thing has ugly answers. I went to five numbers after the decimal to try to keep it as accurate as possible. Um, you could actually leave it in your calculator as well and just pull it for the next part. calculator so the full value is right there and then I'm going to come right here on my paper and just put that it's approximately 0 0.06981 units of measurements would help here so you know what you're talking about go back and ask yourself was I just talking about a car going from A to B or was I talking about something rotating around because there's a pi there and theta, this is a rotation. So this is radians per minute. It's traveling, southern accent, traveling. It's traveling um, 0.06981 radians per minute. And now you're going to pull that. That is your angular speed. It's going to go right here. And I also write my units of measurements. This is radians per minute. Then you would go to your calculator. That big old decimal that's in there, we're just going to pull that down and hit times 7600. So hit times 7600. And I went to the nearest whole number, so I said 531. So this is approximately 531. Now look at what you were just talking about. It said to find what? Linear speed. So don't come over here and start talking about radians. Linear would be car from A to B, right? So that means it should be some type of linear measurement. Inches, feet, miles, yards kilometers, meters. Okay, so look at your units of measurement. This is why it's helpful to write it on here. It would be kilometers per time minutes. So kilometers per minute. And that's the answer. So the satellite is rotating um, 531 kilometers every minute. I need to look it up. I'm 
sometimes there is to be read. Okay, as labor intensive as that was, that was only the first example, and I would say that's probably the most difficult example because of the whole, you know, that you had to think of the, the radius of the earth and the distance to the satellite. So give me give me some time. We got three more examples, and then maybe by that you'll be like, okay, this is really it's not bad. I don't like it, but it's not bad. All right, let's look at the next one. Um, an anchor is hoisted at a rate of two feet per second as the chain is wound around a cap capstan with a 1.8 yard diameter. What is the angular speed of the capstan? Okay, so you have to know what they're talking about. And there is a visual right here. Um, you know, the really, really, really heavy anchors, they, they hoist them in and it rotates around this capstan. It almost looks like um, a cylinder right here. They're telling you that as the anchor is being pulled in, wrapping around the capstan, that the diameter of the capstan is 1.8 yards. They're telling you the rate that it's coming in, right? They're saying that it's hoisted at a rate of 2 feet per second. Is that linear or angular? Use the unit of measurement to help you. Linear per second, right? So let's read it again. An anchor is hoisted at a rate of two feet per second. They just told you the amount of linear measurement per time. That means they're giving you one of the speeds. And you just have to look and see, oh, it's feet, so it's linear speed. They're giving you right here V equals two feet per second. They're giving that to you. We don't have to find it like we did with the angular speed on the last one. Okay, and then they're also telling you that the capstan is a 1.8 yard diameter. Where's the catch? Yep, and what was this? That's the catch here. They're telling you the rate that it's coming in at feet per second, but then they say, hey, by the way, the diameter of it's in yards. So you do need to change. It would be easier to change the diameter from yards to feet. So if the diameter is 1.8 yards, I want the radius, what would it be? 0 0.9, right? The radius is also in yards, if I go from diameter to radius. Now I want it in feet. What do I do with that? Multiply by 3. There's 3 feet in a yard. So you're going to say times 3, and then when you get 2.7, yeah. If you ever forget what direction to go when you're converting, one direction should always be obviously wrong. If you took 0.9 and divided it by 3, right, yard is the bigger unit of measurement. So if you divided it by 3, you get 0.3 feet, and that wouldn't make sense. That would be a smaller, if you think about 3 tenths of a foot. You got almost an entire yard, which is close to three feet. If you accidentally divide it here, then you'd end up with three tenths of a foot, and you should know that, okay, wait a minute, that's not the right direction. So flip it around, multiply, and then you would see like seven feet makes sense. Okay, and then what's it say? It says, what is the angular speed? That means find the omega. I like the omega notation for angular speed because angular means that it's rotating and uh, this is stupid but the W has a bunch of curves in it so I just think of like something traveling along the W. Um, v, look at this, I'm telling you it's stupid, y'all know my mind. You got V for linear speed, you've got omega for angular speed, like this is from point A to point B, what's the speed? 
And this is like if there was some satellite traveling around. You see what I mean? So maybe that will also help you to remember um, that V is linear speed and the omega is angular speed. Okay. So we've made some notes. And now we've decided what we need. It says find angular speed. Let's go back to our formula. The formula is V equals R times W, or R omega. It is linear speed. Two ways to do this. You can plug your numbers in as you have them, or you could get omega by itself, then plug your numbers in. And I, that's the personally the route I go. So I start with the formula they told me, and then I say to myself, what am I actually finding? I'm finding omega. So radius needs to move by division. So when I write this, do you know where it came from? And I just moved omega to the left side because I like what I'm trying to find to be on the left. All right, now it's just a matter of plugging it in. So I'm going to copy the formula right here. Omega equals V over R. They told me V was 2 feet per second, and the radius is 2.7 feet. So 2 divided by 2.7 because we get used to ugly numbers. Point seven four zero oh seven. Think back to what you were trying to find. You were finding the angular speed. So this is radians per second. And that's the answer. Ooh, that's so good. All right, let's do two more practice problems. got a Ferris wheel. Y'all good? Everybody? Oh, y'all, I was wondering why y'all weren't turning the page. It's on the bottom of your turn Okay, we have a Ferris wheel. Let's, um, let's recall our formula. We've got linear speed equals radius times angular speed. That's our formula. It says we have a Ferris wheel of diameter of 10 meters. It's Rotating at the rate of 500 meters per minute, find its angular velocity in radians per second. Please don't let the word velocity throw you off. That is speed. So find the angular speed in radians per second. Okay, we've read it once. We're talking about a Ferris wheel. Maybe you have a picture in your mind. Now let's read it again. And let's underline and pull the info we need. A Ferris wheel has a diameter of 10 meters. We know good and well we don't want the diameter. So pulling from that, I would write that R is 5 meters. Write your units of measurement just in case. It is rotating at the rate of 500 meters per minute. They're telling you the rate of which it's rotating, right? Rate means speed. They're giving you one of the speeds here. They're saying, hey, here's the speed at which it's rotating in terms of linear movement. Because it says 500 meters, right? It doesn't mention radians. In fact, it actually says find the angular speed, so they wouldn't mention what they wanted you to find. So this is the linear speed, which remember is like from A to B, that's V. So V is 500 minute, meters per minute. Then it says 
find its angular speed, which means find omega. And they do want you to be in radians per second. What's the difference in that? What we have is in minutes. What they want is in seconds. So we'll worry about that at the end. Let's find the angular speed in terms of radians per minute, and then we'll translate that to radians per second. So this is our formula that we start with, right? But if we're finding the angular speed we learned on the last example, we just divide the r. So when I write this, do y'all know where it comes from? Angular speed equals V over R. Make a note, you can come up here and say, or angular speed is V over R, depending on which one you need. All right, what is V? 500 meters per minute. What's R? Five meters. This is why it helps to write your units of measurement, because if one of them had not been meters, then when you wrote it, hopefully it would stick out and you'd be like, whoa, wait a minute, i got to fix that. All right, so 500 divided by 5, 100, copy. So this was the calculation for the angular speed, which means it's radians per minute. Okay, the directions though said find it in radians per second. So instead of 100 radians over one minute, I'm going to change the one minute to 60 seconds. So 100 radians over 60 seconds. And then now, So the answer is 1.67 radians per second. shoot me on this one. I need to give you an example of when you have some serious converting to do so that you're not lost. Your bike has a wheel diameter of 30 inches and you're traveling and your wheels are rotating at 141 revolutions per minute. What's the bicycle speed in miles per hour? All right, we've read it once, let's read it twice. We're talking about a bike, we're talking about the uh, rotation of the wheels. I heard a lot of different units of measurement, so let's go in and underline. Your wheel has a diameter of 30 inches. We don't want diameter, that means radius is 15 inches. You are traveling and your wheels are rotating at 141 revolutions per minute. 141 revolutions per minute. They're giving you a rate. Which rate are they giving you? Your clue is the word revolutions. Revolutions is describing the rotation, right? Or the radians. Um, so this is the omega. They're giving you omega. Now we need to fix it though, because it didn't say radians per minute, it just says how many times it's turning. Go back to what you know, what's one full rotation? Two pi. So we need to get this in uh, radian format. So 141 times two pi. I am gonna write this over the number one because it is per one minute, right? Just so I can keep my mindset in the fact that this is a rate. 
So in your calculator, 141 times 2 pi. We're going to go to the nearest hundred on here. Just leave the decimal in your calculator, though. 885.93. Now, you got to know what you're talking about. This was the angular speed, so that means this is radians per minute because I have it right there, right? Uh, let's keep reading. It says, what is the bicycle speed in miles per hour? Okay, what's the speed in miles per hour? Miles is a unit of linear measurement, so this means find V. And they want it in miles per hour. Let's find V in inches per minute, which is exactly the info that I have. I have inches, I have minute. Let's find it in inches per minute, and then we will translate that to miles per hour, okay? So let's find V, which is radius times omega. Radius is 15 inches. Omega is 885.93 radians per minute. Now remember, we are talking about rotations, and we are down to inches per minute. So that's why this number is massive. <clears throat> you get 13,288.93. Type that in. 15 times that 885. Now look at what you what you had. This is inches per minute, right? So that's the answer, but in the wrong format. They don't want inches per minute, they want miles per hour. Because nobody walks around and says, well, I'm, I'm going at a speed of 13,000 inches per minute. You can't wrap your mind around that. All right, so I'm going to draw a big arrow here to say, okay, now here comes the converting part. We're converting to miles per hour. And this is where uh, this is where I am not going to sit here and tell you that I'm comfortable with converting units of measurement. I am not. It is my like top two least favorite thing to do in math. I have a master's in math. I can tell you the index of a fairy sequence. You probably don't even know what I'm talking about. Uh, but I cannot do units of conversion without having to sit here and remind myself that's my right hand, that's my left hand. Wait a minute, one yard, you know what I mean? So I'm going to put this on the board and then I'm going to explain where it came from because that's the way that I think if you're good at units of measurement and converting, take off. I'm proud of you. I'm jealous. I suck at it. I hate it. I can't stand converting units of measurements um, because I always feel intimidated by it. Okay, so let me show you what, what, what my mindset sees. You always start with what you have, right? So we've got 13,288.95. We don't want to write it out as a linear, like, you know, along one line. We want now to write the actual fraction. So this is inches per the one minute, right? Okay, I want to convert this to miles per hour. So I need to know in one mile how many inches are there, which is why I gave you this right here. So I'm going towards miles per hour. What you're going towards 
needs to be in the position of the way you're going to say it. If you're saying miles per hour, miles needs to be in the top of the fraction. So one mile is... 63,360 inches. You also have to remind yourself that the fraction you're multiplying by needs to represent 1, right? Kind of like 8 over 8 is 1, or 3 yards, no, I'm sorry, 3 feet over 1 yard, that's equivalent to the same length. Okay, so 1 mile is this amount of inches. So this is a one, right? Okay, so this is inches per minute. Now I've got um, miles per inches, so I'm going to convert. My inches are going to cancel here. I'm going to end up with miles per minute. I don't want miles per minute. I want miles per hour. So remind yourself, per hour means the hour needs to be in the bottom. So the one hour in the bottom is how many minutes? 60 minutes. And see now your minutes are going to cancel. And so you're left with miles per hour. So now you would go to your calculator and you would do 13,000 times 60 divided by 63,000. And you should get approximately 12.6 miles per hour. And so now if someone said, well, how fast is he going on that bicycle? And you said 12 miles an hour. That actually makes sense instead of saying 13,000 inches per minute. Can't wrap my mind around that. I'm, I'm, tomorrow I will let you know like how nasty is this going to get on the exam so you know in advance if i remember correctly the homework like the lesson and then maybe one from the homework is the nastiest part if i remember correctly but i'll tell you tomorrow i'm not going to like send you in the dark um on this all right so let's go to the last one <clears throat> Brett and Will ride the carousel. Brett always selects a horse on the outside row. Will prefers the row closest to the center. These rows are 19 feet, 3 inches, and 13 feet, 11 inches from the center. The angular speed of the carousel is 2.4 revolutions per minute. What is the difference in miles per hour of the linear speeds? So this is one of those where you're going to find the linear speed of Brett and then the linear speed of Will. And then you just talk about the difference in them. Um, this would also help you understand, like, if, depending on where you sit on a carousel, if it was like a super fast one, we'll determine how dizzy you're going to get, right? Because then you, you know the speed that you're going. Okay. So let's look at it. Um, let's sketch a picture to help us understand. So I'm going to do a really big circle, and then I'm going to do a somewhat smaller circle. I'm going to say that from the center, Will is like right here. I'm just going to put a W. And then from the center, we're going to say that Brett is right here, and I'm going to put a B. And I don't want to go in there and label those um, the radius because it's going to get too crowded. So just next to it, I'm going to make a note that the radius, now look how I do this so I don't mess this up. The radius for will, we'll do R sub W. What did it say? All right. When they, look at this word right here. When you're reading word problems, if they're giving you multiple lines of information and they don't want to have to write them as two separate sentences, they're just going to clump it together. The way that they list the people at the beginning of it and then the information, when they say respectively, they're saying whatever I listed first goes with the person I talked about first. Does 
that makes sense. So if you look at it, it says, Brett always selects a horse on the outside. Will prefers the closest. So Brett would be the first piece of information, and Will is the second piece of information. Um, another way to figure that out is knowing that Will should have the smaller radius. So this is 13 feet and 11 inches. The radius for breadth is 19 feet and 3 inches, right? They want the final answer in miles per hour. I'm just going to box this in so I'll remember. They want the linear speed in miles per hour. So my goal is find the linear speed in miles per hour. Then they give you the angular speed, 2.4 revolutions per minute. They're giving you the angular speed of the carousel. I'm going to draw an arrow. So the angular speed is 2.4. When they say revolutions, you need to think 2 pi. So 2.4 times 2 pi. This is per minute. So I'm going to leave that number in there as that ugly decimal. So we're going to say, let's just go to 15. Whole number. So about 15, this is the angular speed, so this is radians per minute. So this is a repeat of this one right here. You're finding the linear speed, right? You're just doing it with breadth, then you're doing it with will, and then we do need to get them in miles per hour, and then we just need to compare the difference between the two. Okay, so I'm going to come right here and say this is Will, Will's info. Then I'll do Brett. Actually, yeah. And then we'll compare it. All right, so the formula is V equals R times angular speed. We've got 13 feet, 11 inches. What would be helpful here to do with that? Can I write 13 foot, 11 inches right here in my formula? No. So we need to get that to either just plain feet, like what's the decimal in plain feet, um, or if you want, you can go ahead and convert it to miles, but since it's so small, it would probably be easier to keep it in feet just get the full decimal of it, then later convert to miles. So you've got to know how many inches are in a foot. 12 inches in a foot. How many inches extra is this? 11, right? So it's almost a whole other foot. So you go to your calculator and you say, what is 11 divided by 12 to get the decimal portion of the foot it represents? We only have 11. Out of the 12 we need to say, you got another foot in there, right? Y'all with me on that? So 13 feet 11 inches is 13 point that crap. Y'all with me? We're going to say 13.92 just to make it easy. So this is about 13.92 feet. We need to do the same with the 19.3 since we're already doing this. Now you can probably do this one in your head. You only have three inches out of the 12 you need to say you have a whole other foot completed. So three over 12 is what fraction? One over four. And y'all should know that decimal in terms of quarters. Three, uh, point two five. So three divided by 12, point two five. So this radius is 19 feet. 
19.25 feet. And honestly, I would say at that point, I'm already done with the problem. That's, that's, that's the way I feel about it. I've already converted, I'm done. But I'm not. All right, so now we got to find Will's linear speed. We know the radius now in feet, 13.92 feet. And we have the angular speed was 15 radians per minute. This is, I'm going to put a sub W, the linear speed for will. So 13.92 times 15. 208.8. Was linear speed, so it's look at your units of measurement. We've got feet per minute. All right, let's repeat with Brett. I'm going to move Brett over. Brett's 19.25. And then the 15 radians per minute. So we can already see there's a difference, right? Who's moving faster? Brett, Brett's moving faster. But they want us to be able to talk about it in terms of miles per hour, which I, I actually don't agree with because you're talking about the, I mean, you, you're talking about a carousel. Perfect timing. Y'all can go on. I'll, um, I'll finish it and then just explain it at the beginning of class tomorrow, okay? Thank <laughs> you.